This video is brought to you by DICE, the global entertainment content marketplace. Anyone watching this video knows what Netflix is and what they do, as they have been the largest video on demand slash streaming platform for almost a decade now, taking the internet by storm in the early to mid 2010s. But who are they? What's the history of Netflix? How did this company become the largest online subscription platform in the world? Today, we will be exploring the early years of Netflix and how they came to be so influential to modern video consumption. But before we dive into this video, if you're a buyer looking to acquire content for your channel or platform, or you're a seller looking to get your content out to a global audience, you can get in touch with us through our website, connect.digital, or you can email us at dicesales at connectdigital.com. Without further ado, let's explore the rise of Netflix. To understand how Netflix got where it is today, we have to reverse back 25 years to the summer of 1997 in Santa Cruz where Reed Hastings and Mark Randolph resided. The two were already experienced in the industry, with Hastings being the CEO of Pure Atria and Randolph being the VP of Corporate Marketing for the same company. Due to an impending merger between companies that would potentially leave them both without jobs, Hastings told Randolph to find a new, fresh idea for them to work on together. In the summer of 97, the duo went into a local record store to purchase a copy of Patsy Cleen's Greatest Hits. Randolph then mailed this to Hastings' house, and this is when they knew they were onto something. Netflix was officially registered on August 29th, 1997, using just shy of $2 million of Hastings' money. Hastings assumed the role of chairman, with 70% ownership of the company. Randolph became the CEO, being a minority owner. The company wasn't an immediate success story, going through quite a few iterations before getting the plane in the air. They struck gold coming up with a subscription-based service where users would pay a $19.95 fee to access their content library, choosing a title to be delivered to their home. Once finished with the title, customers were to return the title before they could choose a new one to be delivered to their house. Netflix's official website was launched on April 14, 1998 to immediate success. With a library of over 900 titles, it didn't take long for the orders to start coming in, ending their first day with 137 customers. The late 1990s brought moderate success for the company, with 239,000 subscribers signing up, as well as expanding the title range to over 3,000. Their success caught the attention of Jeff Bezos, the CEO of Amazon, who offered to acquire Netflix for around $15 million. Whilst Randolph seemed open to the offer, Hastings actually declined. In hindsight, I'm sure that's one of the best decisions Hastings ever made. Unfortunately, this streamlined success didn't come without setbacks for the company. The first setback came with an unsuccessful meeting that Randolph had with Sony, leading to him being demoted from CEO to president, with Hastings taking over the former role. Following the millennium change, two major events happened that would drastically stall the growth of Netflix. The first event was the dot-com bubble collapse of 2000, which led to a loss of revenue for the company in the latter months of that year. The second was the terror attack on September 11th, 2001. This caused the company to put their initial public offerings on hold, as well as lay off a third of its 120 person company. Alongside this, a botched meeting with Blockbuster left Hastings defeated as they refused an offer of $50 million to purchase Netflix. This sour patch didn't ruin the company though, as we all know now. Instead, they trudged through the mud and found their feet again, as they began making profit and finding further success in the company. Netflix officially went public on May 29th, 2002, selling 5.5 million shares priced at $15. Hastings owned 500,000 of these shares, whilst Randolph owned 166,000. The company's IPO raised over $80 million and was valued at roughly 300 million. 2003 saw the company bring in 6.5 million in profits on a revenue of 272 million. And by 2004, that number had climbed to an astonishing $49 million on a revenue of $500 million. Unfortunately, this success wasn't without a huge change, as in 2003, Randolph left the company, selling off the rest of his shares. This didn't stop the company's rapid growth though, as by 2005, the company had a library of over 35,000 titles and were estimated as making 1 million deliveries per day. Profits rose to $80 million by 2006, with Netflix having 6.3 million subscribers to the platform.
What do you think of this video? Let us know down in the comments below. As always, you can get in touch with us through our website, connect.digital, or you can email us at dicesales at connectdigital.com for business inquiries. Be sure to subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. Have a great day.